Welcome to Mean Brews. My name is Matthew Harold. Today we're going to study the classic style of Belgian triple. Uh, this happens to be my favorite style of beer, and my favorite example of the style is quite unusual. It's the triple Carmeliette. Um, with that said, let's dive right into the recipes. Um, my data set consists of three best of show recipes, uh, nine gold, gold medal recipes, um, two silver recipes and four bronze recipes. So pretty good data set of, you know, 18 winning beers. As far as the BJCP style, um, it's described as a pale, somewhat spicy, dry, strong Trappist ale with a pleasant rounded malt flavor and a firm hop bitterness. Um, so for my data set going back all the way to 2002 up to 2019, I've seen that Basically, it's pretty stable. There's not a lot of variation between uh, the recipes that I can see. Um, however, um, the variation that I'm seeing, regardless of, of date, is, is pretty nominal. Um, mostly around the spices used, uh, if they were used, and the malt bills used. Um, next slide. Uh, making these slides a little bit bigger, I'm noticing a lot of people are watching on their phones, so I want to make sure that people can see the data and understand the data. And so I've changed the format up a little bit, and we'll use this going forward. As far as the original gravity, um, the mean is right at 1.082, and uh, the average beer was just a little bit high of the, the middle of the BJCP range. Um, I think we had six recipes. Uh, that exceeded the max from BJCP, so that's quite significant, 6 of 18, a third. Um, and I've noticed that the recent winners are kind of gravitating towards the lower end of the original gravity. When it comes to IBUs, this isn't a beer that really showcases hops, um, so most of the IBUs have been on the lower end of the range. As you can see, the, the average is right at 27.1 IBUs. Um, so I think this is good guidance on how you should formulate your recipes. You know, keep this a, a malt and um, yeast product flavored beer. Um, IBUs are there really for balance. When it comes to color, I think it's right on the uh, BJCP guidelines. There's no real guidance outside of that that I would share. Stick within the guidelines and you'll be fine uh, with this style. Uh, the mean was at 5.5 .5 SRM. Uh, when it comes to the malt proportions, um, this one had a pretty significant amount of adjunct at 13.7. 84% uh, was base malt, and some other recipes threw in some crystal or uh, toasted malts at 1 and 1.4% uh, of the grist. Uh, when it came to the adjunct, there were two different styles, really. There was uh, sugars. So of that 13.7%, 12.1% um, was simple sugars and 1.3% was flaked or 1.6% was flaked. Obviously this is a beer that you want to lighten up with your simple sugars, your candy sugar, your table sugar, dextrose, etc. Um, so it's, it doesn't surprise me that there's a high proportion of simple sugars in uh, these recipes. When it comes to base malts, uh, three real standouts here. 100% of the recipes use Belgian Pilsner, no surprise, with an averaged uh, grist percentage of 77%. Um, the next highest was wheat malt. 44% of the recipes use wheat malt at an average percentage of 10.3% of the grist. And 17% of the recipes used Munich malt at 6.6% of the grist. I probably wouldn't use Munich. I probably would stick with the wheat and the Pilsner. Uh, there were also... There were also two other uh, grains. Two row was used in one recipe and oat, malted oats, faucet malted oats was used in another at 10% uh, for oats and about 4% for the two row. Probably wouldn't use those unless you're trying to replicate triple carmeliette, which uses all three grains, wheat, oats, and uh, barley. Um, and that was actually my recipe that I won a uh, competition with where I was replicating that style. As far as crystal and toast malts, uh, the most highest used malt was aromatic malt. 39% of the recipes used aromatic malt at a, about 3% of the grist was the average. The range was pretty big for this malt. 
Next highest was carapils. 17% of the recipes use carapils at, a, at an average rate of 4% of the grist. Uh, biscuit was used in 11% of the recipes with 1% uh, of the grist. And there were some others as well. Um, you know, light crystal was used on one recipe at about one and a half, two percent. Don't know that I I would use that. Um, the only one that really stands out to me here is the aromatic. I think aromatics are really needed uh, for these light Belgian styles of beer. They really fit well with the ester and phenol phenol profiles that come from the yeast. Um, so I would stick with um, an aromatic malt as your uh, as your uh, specialty malt for this style. When it comes to the adjuncts, um, on this graph, I've kind of showed the solid lines as the simple sugars and the dashed lines as flake grains. Let's talk about the simple sugars first. Um, the range really, you know, I, I don't want to plot each one on here, but it looks like sticking within 8 to around 13% simple sugars um, for your adjuncts is in the sweet spot for the style. Um, the most prominent simple sugars were cane sugar at 45% of the recipes and candy sugar at 38% of the recipes. Um, when you look at the flake malts, um, they're a really narrow band right there between 6 and 8% of the grist. Um, and they were, you know, we've got three there, um, flaked oats, flaked barley, and flaked wheat. Uh, so if you want to use a flake malt, stick with around 6 to 8%. I think that's pretty proven to be the right recipe there. Uh, only one recipe added simple sugars during the boil for a full 60 minutes. The rest usually put them in, in flame out or added them to the fermenter. There's an argument that you should add them to, ferment, to the fermenter instead of to the wort to prevent osmotic shock of the yeast. Um, personally, in my recipes, I add them at flame out to just get that sanitary uh, boost of, of sugars in the uh, fermenter. Onto the water, there's really a very little data used on the water. Uh, two recipes out of 18 provided their their salts uh, or their their water profiles for the styles. And from reading on the web and in you know brew like a monk, um, it's very obvious that the different Trappist monasteries have very different water profiles. Um, I've shown a few here: um, West Mall, Ro Roquefort. Chimay and West Veletrin. Um, you can kind of see, you know, from a, a pretty soft water profile for West Mall all the way to something I would consider very hard or somewhat hard with a high amount of minerals in West Veletrin. So really pick what you like here. Um, try the beers, see which ones you, you like the flavor of, and then you can use something tailored to your uh, recipe. As far as hop additions, um, Pretty much all the recipes use bittering hops, of course. Around 65% use flavor hops. And around the same, somewhere between 55 and 60, uh, used aroma hops. Nobody used dry hops or um, whirlpool hops. <coughs> Excuse me. That's per the style. Uh, I would recommend these three hop additions in my recipe at the end. So our spice additions, um, there are I think around five recipes that put spices in their um, wort. Um, three of the recipes use coriander seed. Uh, I won't read through the uh, rates at which they added them. You can get them from the slide. Um, the two of the recipes use sweet orange peel. These are the two classic style uh, spices used in wit beer, and I think they go they complement the style very well. Uh, two recipes, including mine, that's in this data set, use licorice root. Uh, licorice root is an unfermentable uh, sweet source that really does bring a sweet backbone to the style. Uh, one recipe each used black pepper, fennel seed, or a supreme grapefruit. Um, and the rates are again shown on this slide, so I won't go, go into that. As far as bittering hops, um, three really stood out here. Sots, Styrian Goldings, and Hallertal. Uh, personally, I use Styrian Goldings. I think it's perfect for the style. Um, I know a lot of other recipes do. Um, but you know, there really doesn't it really doesn't matter here. You're just getting the IBUs out of this hop. There's really very little, if any, flavor com contribution added here. Um, flavor hops, hops, uh, sots really um, comes out here at 39% of the recipes using sots as a flavor hop. There were some others, all continental hops, European continental hops, 
Um, but I would stick with uh, Sots for the flavor hops. Aroma hops, again, 39% of the recipes used uh, Sots hops and also Goldings and Hallertau uh, were the other, but I would stick with Sots, obviously, for this style. When it comes to yeast, it was pretty evenly split between the Chimay, which is White Labs 500, or the West Mall, which is the White Labs 530. There were some others used. The Dedal is a Belgian wheat uh, strain. Um, Mangrove Jacks M27 was used in a recipe. Uh, my recipe used White Lab 720. This is the Forbidden Fruit strain. It's actually a uh, sweet mead yeast. Uh, it does really well in, in all light Belgian styles. Um, Y yeast 1762, which is Roquefort, was used in two recipes. Really, if you stick with the Belgian strain, you'll be okay. But obviously, you know, 500 or 530 are the two most prominent strains used for this style. Um, as far as mash types, 22% were single infusion mashes. 78% uh, were step mashes. So obviously, this is a style for benefits. That benefits from a step mash. And this, the mash rests that were used... Um, you know, protein rest was used in about 70% of, a little over 70% of the recipes, the range of 120 to 130, and they were grouped around, you know, those two numbers. Um, 127 was the mean. There was, uh, alpha rest was about 152 average with a range of, you know, 147 to 163, which is pretty high. I would stick in the low 150s for this style. Um, there was a beta rest. For in a few recipes, don't know that I would do it for this style. Um, I might do it for a Belgian Golden Strong just to dry it out some more. Uh, but for a triple, I think you're you're overkill um, using you know a beta and an alpha alpha rest. If you do use it, the average was about 145 degrees. Fermentation temperature uh, average fermentation temperature was 68 degrees, ranging from 65 to 75. Uh, most, if not all, the recipes started low and let it free rise up to a higher temperature. Um, when you looked at this, the yeast that were used, um, Hoe Garden Strain was right there at 65 uh, as its starting uh, gravity or starting uh, temperature for fermentation. West Mall started somewhere between 65 and 67. The Chimay started between 67 and 72, and the Mangrove Jacks yeast. 75. The other ones didn't report uh, their fermentation temperatures. Kind of keep within these. You know, I keep on the low end and then let it free rise as it uh, ferments and generates its own exothermic reactions. Um, you know, let the let the yeast do what it's going to do. It's a Belgian style. You want those those esters to really pop. As far as carbonation, seven recipes reported um, an average of 2.7 volumes. Um, I recommend. I think there were two really low that kind of moved that curve, and I recommend three volumes with the right bottles, um, you know, the right Belgian thick bottles to serve this beer. Really helps the style, really brightens up the style, gives you that big fluffy white head that, that uh, kind of defines the Belgian triple style. When it comes to my recipe, um, this isn't the one that won. This is basically from the data. So I'll just walk through it. Um, around 79-80% of, you know, Belgian uh, Pilsner malt as my base malt, and four to five percent of wheat malt. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in about 3.5 or more. I go up to five percent aromatic malts on my light uh, Belgian beers. Uh, 3.5 seems to be pretty good, and 12.5 percent candy sugar. I'm going to bitter with Styrian Goldings at 60 minutes, about 22 IBUs worth. I'm going to finish at 20 minutes and 5 minutes with Sots Hops uh, at these IBU rates. So just dose your hops, your late edition hops, to hit these IBU numbers. And I'm going to use 530. I really like the West Mall strain. I like it better than Chimay. Um, it produced some, some great um, um, Belgian triples and other Belgian styles of beer. Don't be afraid to try the 720. It's it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of my secret uh, yeasts that I use for my Belgian styles. Um, so, but but for this one, my guidance is going to be use 530. Uh, I'm going to shoot for an original gravity of 1.082 uh, with IBUs of around 30. And the water profile I like to use, I like to use uh, the West Mall 
water. I think the softer water really goes to smooth out this style of beer and not provide so much, you know, harshness from the gypsum or the, the sulfates. Um, so I really like that West Mall or Antwerp water. As far as mash profile, I'm going to do a step mash, 20 minutes at, at 127F or 53 Celsius, and 60 minutes at 152. I'm going to mash out at 168, uh, sparge as usual, and I'm going to boil for 80 minutes. Um, chill to about 64. I'm using the West Mall against, I'm using the West Mall yeast, I'm using their fermentation profile, which is pitch at 64, let it rise to 68 over a week, and hold at 68. They severely underpitch, according to the books, to about 250,000 cells per milliliter per degree Play-Doh. I'm not going to go that low because I've had some beers be well under attenuated, but I am going to underpitch a little bit to 750K and oxygenate um, it very well, make sure I've got a healthy pitch, um, and let, let those esters really come out with uh, the underpitch that I'm doing. After two weeks in the fermentation, I'm going to bottle my beers and let them, uh, I probably will use what I temp typically do with my Belgians is I, I use CBC one, um, or a champagne yeast to bottle condition and I'll bottle condition with the three volumes in Belgian bottles. Um, using additional yeast at bottling will ensure that you get the right carbonation that you haven't stressed your primary fermentation yeast too much. Um, so I, I usually will sprinkle, uh, in each bottle, a little bit of CBC one um, to just give it that extra kickstart, and that's basically it. Um, I'm going to jump over to the style randomizer again. Um, let's see what we're going to do next week. Rye IPA. Well, excellent. Well, thank you for joining uh, Mean Brews this week. Um, I hope you've learned something today. Feel free to subscribe or hit the notifications icon. Give me a give me a like or a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, I'd like to hear back from you. If you've got, uh, if you brew my recipes, let me know how they taste. Let me know how they go. If you enter them in competition, I really would like to hear back. Um, if you've got any winning recipes out there, I, I am always looking for data. And I will include that data in my styles here. Um, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.